As promised, we have a young lady who has joined the fam in the morning this morning, a Washingtonian, might I say. Welcome to the fam in the morning, Miss Angela Ra. How are you now? Thank you. I'm happy to be oh. here. And just get a to, round of applause. Yes. Just to clarify, though, mm-hmm. you said Washingtonian. I'm from Seattle, Washington. It's Washington, exactly. I've uh, lived in D.C. for over a decade, but I still that claim is, Seattle, yeah. Washington. Well, after 10 years, I, f- <laughs> I regret to inform you, you're now a Washingtonian. Nah, son, not with this administration. Maybe under right? Barack Obama's. Right. <laughs> Speaking of this administration, let's just start and jump right into it. What in the hell is going on now? I've seen all these potential impeachment papers coming out and just... What's going on? Can you please, like, just, uh, I'm lost for words of what's going on right now in this administration. That's me and you both. <laughs> I, think, I think, for the most part, a lot of people are. Okay, so I have a, qu- a couple few questions. Um, one, what is going on with Donald Trump Jr. and the why was the release of the, the email chain? Why um, the impeachment process? Is it just a process? Is there any logical way that this is actually going to happen? And three, in your professional opinion... At what point um, do the people who have, like, rode for Trump, like, ride or die Trump people, right? At some point, don't you think that they can be like, okay, you know what? We thought one thing. We don't think this anymore. Or is it just something that once, you, once you're in, you're in? So you asked three um, very distinct questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. My team is in here, and they'll tell you my memory is not that good. That's okay. So I'll try. I'll follow up. Yeah. I got mommy just, brain, girl. Just next time, mm-hmm. let's just, yeah, yeah. let's just have a time, conversation. Right. Right. I, mean, I should have wrote that down. I have three. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is important stuff. I'm excited. No, you're, you're, and you're right. It is important, so I want to try to make sure yeah. I, I answer all of it. Um, the first thing I would say to you is with Donald Trump Jr., it is a really big deal. Um I likened it to, uh, yesterday I likened it to, you know, you have a friend who, you know, is on the, you know, something may have happened criminally for them, and, you know, let's say they're, you know, getting ready to talk to an investigator, and they say to the investigator, like, I didn't have anything to do with it, I'll prove it. And then all of their proof is that they did Didn't the, have something to do with it. That they did something wrong. Lies yeah. and lies. So that is the real challenge. So you really have to ask yourself, I'm an attorney, you have to ask yourself, who is your lawyer, right? Like, who advised you to do this, or did you consult a lawyer before you did this? Yeah. Um, so that's the first issue. What Donald Trump Jr. Um, basically put out for the folks who don't know what happened um, is there was a New York Times story that was getting ready to be posted. They found out about the story. He tried to preempt the story by mm-hmm. posting the emails himself because they had those Jeez, emails. Okay. And it was um, from a business contact that the Trump family had for years. Donald Trump worked with this entertainer, this guy represented on some of the um, Miss Universe pageants. Yes. Right and his now. father, who I believe was a real estate developer. The guy who um, is a PR guy said that he was going to put Donald Trump Jr. in contact with a Russian government lawyer who had dirt on Hillary Clinton. I'm giving Mm -hmm. you the colloquial version. Had dirt on Hillary Clinton and wanted to ensure that Donald Trump Sr. would be elected president. So that is really Uh all you need to demonstrate any type of collusion with the foreign government. Collusion isn't the legal term. It's term. It's conspiracy. And I think we probably have all had family or friends who've gone down for some type of conspiracy charge. Mm -hmm. That is what it was. Um, And it it would have been a conspiracy to commit a violation of federal election law at that point. Wow. Um, That's the answer to your first question. I don't remember what your second question was. I got you. The second question was uh, the impeachment stuff that happened over the last 24, 48 hours. So there's no impeachment stuff that has happened. Um, There was a member of Congress, Brad Mm -hmm. Sherman, who filed impeachment articles, um, basically suggesting at this point we have enough to go forward with impeachment proceedings. I would just remind the listeners that Democrats are not in control of the House or the Senate. Right. Um, The Republicans are in the Senate and the House majority, and this would require um, support from, from congressional Republicans. And right now there is not support for that. They have to get to the point where they see... The power of partisanship as less important as the uh, less important to the power of the people and what's the right thing to do. I frankly have been since the guy came down the escalator uh, I love announcing his the campaign. <laughs> I love that. I mean, yeah, I'm orangey, like yeah. anything but yeah, president. Forty, forty-five. Not even calling him that because yeah. um, I don't think that he's earned that. Yeah, uh, seriously, yeah. Russia. I mean, you know, but I think that since he came down that escalator. I have questioned human decency from that moment, yeah. right, right when he announced his campaign. And so I am urging them to say, you know, partisanship doesn't matter. 
We just want standards, good, strong standards for human decency, and he doesn't represent that. Yeah, and that's kind of where my third question was mm-hmm. is it's, it's okay, so maybe you were riding with Trump, and you were like, yeah, I really think. Who was? Not you. Not you. No, 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 <laughs> not you. Any of your listeners? No. But Somebody, I, well, somebody, hold on. Somebody voted for him because, as you can yeah, see, the guy is president. Yeah. Somebody might not yeah. have, though. If you get That's into 39 fact. states' right. <laughs> election systems, yeah. maybe it wasn't as many people as we thought. How he became but president was yes. still But I'm referring confused. to, like, you know, the Republicans and the people who are sitting, like you said, they have, you know, everything right now. Yeah. So maybe you decided, okay, yeah, we're going to ride with Trump, and, and this is what it's going to do. But at some point, it's like when you're guilty by association, right? So, you know, growing up, my mom would always say, yeah, you know, just pay attention to your surroundings because that's a reflection of you. At some point, do you think, because he's done so much, Mm -hmm. I mean, in so little time, at what point do they stop riding for him? Or when you're in politics like that, do you just ride along with it? I don't think think that you should because history won't be kind to you. Come on, Um, But that's the thing that they have to answer for themselves. Um, I know yesterday there was an interview with John McCain, Senator John McCain from Arizona, who demonstrated he was irritated with the fact that it was hijacking the agenda. But I think it's about so much more than the fact that y'all can't pass a health care bill or a tax reform bill. Y'all weren't going to be able to pass that health care bill anyway Mm because it's a terrible bill. But the reality of it is, is he's not just... Um, messing up and being a distraction for the agenda, he's actually compromising our national security. And yeah. that should be reason enough for you to want answers to your questions. And yeah. they're now finally, yeah. um, to be fair, getting to a point where they're saying we need answers. But I don't think it's at the same level and pitch from which our uh, congressional Democrats have been calling for answers. If you're just turning into the fan, we are talking to Angela Rye. You've seen her all over CNN and everything else, a political commentator, turning everything else in between. Now, you also have a podcast that you're launching uh, on one with a Ra. Yeah, it launched yesterday. Yes. Um, awesome. Yes, very, very happy about that. It's done very well. Um, so shout Congrats. out to everybody who's listening. Thank you so much. Yes. Um Definitely a labor of love. It took longer than some folks would have wanted it to take, but I wanted to do it right. It Mm -hmm. was important to me that we were speaking to the hearts of folks, that it wasn't so heavy given all that we're carrying right now. We just talked about what it feels like to be in D.C. in this particular political climate. Um, Even some of the stuff we're dealing with culturally and racially, I think, is challenging. So I wanted to have some levity in it. I wanted to, you know, make sure we could crack jokes, talk about some ratchet stuff, um, (laughs) but also talk about... Yeah, Sophista yes. Ratchet. I openly claim oh, that. Oh, yeah. I say Rache, like classy Ratchet. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. You like that? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I like Sophista Ratchet better, but yeah. I'll let you mm. roll with that. That's okay, because we, we you can know, all have our own. No, no, no. I'm I like it. I liked it. I liked it. I was like, I forgot to put LOL when I said it out loud. I see what you did. I see what you did. But no, I seriously, no shade. I'm like, I like what you did there. Thank um, you. But yeah, so it's for uh, the Rache or the Sophista Ratchet, and um, it's just, it's just been good. It's been really good, really well received. Good. Well, we, we really commend you for all the work you're doing and really using your voice for greatness. There are so many Thank people you. who have platforms like yourself who just don't speak about things that are of importance, and you really always focus on things that really matter. Uh, so I really would just want to salute you for that. Thank you. And I have a quick question because um, as in a person who's not, you know, surrounded by politics all the time myself. Um, It's still so heavy and so much, right? Because I care about people, the world, so it's just heavy. How are, what's your self-care like to to survive? Because that is your job. You're in politics. And right now, like you said, the the political climate is crazy. How are you taking care of yourself and your mind and staying like strong in this? Because I can't imagine. Yeah. So um, for self-care, I think um, it really just depends. I think there are some days where I'm better at it than others. Some days, some weeks where I'm better at, at it than others. Um, but I think one of the most important things for me always has been to speak my mind. And um, whether I'm on air with someone that I think is an idiot, you know, or not, I make sure that I make it clear to them that I think what they said was dumb or that they lied or whatever it mm-hmm. is. And that's my first, so I don't have any regrets when I go off air. You right, know, gotcha. um, I think the other thing is talking to friends, talking to family, finding time to do things that I love um, and being around people I love. Um, and I do want to challenge the, the kind of the first part of what you said, which was I'm not in politics. I care about it, but I'm not in it. I think that it's time for us to have a paradigm Absolutely. shift and start really understanding that even if you don't work in it, you are in it all the time because these you. people literally you. impact yes. your every day life. If we haven't seen anything yes. else from this administration, we, sit, we should see that. I've been challenging myself to be more aware of what's happening locally. 
I started working in federal politics, so that's what I know the best. That's what I have the most passion around. But shame on me for not being really, really engaged on the local level as well because those folks in some ways impact our lives a lot more than federal. Oh, yeah, on the local level, that's where, like, change really happens for your own community. So, I'm, I'm you know, I we're so happy to have you here. Man, round of applause yes. for Angela. Thank round you. of Thank applause. You. Hey, Angela. plug your social media once again while you're here so everybody can follow you and everything sure. else you have going on. Um, so, Twitter, I'm Angela underscore Rye for those of you that may not not be that swift it's the bar line <laughs> not the hyphen uh, <laughs> and uh, instagram is angela rye all one word and i think facebook is the angela rye uh, mm-hmm. the page to like so hey, thank yeah. you so much and, wait for how can they find your podcast Oh, yes. So it's on Apple. It's on um, Spotify. It's on SoundCloud. I believe today it's on Tidal. It's also on Google Play. So hit that subscribe button. Awesome. And, um, And yeah. We'll post it at KYSDC.com. Thank you. Angela, thank you so much. Good morning.